Hi, I'm Scott. I play the saxophone and the clarinet. I haven't found a lot of really good information about adjusting single reeds online, so here's my short video seminar on the subject. Adjusting a reed means scraping or sanding down parts of it, shaping it to make it play better. We all know that only a few reeds in any given box are playable. If you buy a box of reeds, pull them out one by one, pick one or two that suck the least and throw the rest away, you're not only wasting money on the reeds you throw away, but you're probably not getting the best response out of the reeds that you keep. You really can control how your reeds play. I've always wondered why reeds don't just play out of the box, since manufacturers are so keen on telling us how precise their production process is and how tight their quality control is. You'd think they'd all be good, but they're not. It's a mystery to me. My goal in this video is a pretty grand one, to make any reed playable. Well, maybe not any reed, but most of them. The reed adjustment techniques I use have saved me a lot of money because reeds aren't cheap. So the goal of any wind instrument is basically to make a column of air vibrate and then control that air to make musical noise. On the flute, you blow across a hole in the tube. With oboes and bassoons, you get two little slivers of reed to vibrate against each other. Brass players buzz their lips into a metal cup. We clarinetists and saxophonists vibrate a single reed against a rigid mouthpiece. Since we rely on them to make our sound, it's no wonder we become obsessed with reeds. We try different brands and different strengths. We love the good ones and we hate the bad ones. Only double reed players are more neurotic than we are. You know, a lot of oboists and bassoonists spend hours making their own reeds. I wonder what brass players obsess over. I'm going to show you my reed adjusting routine. Take from it what you want. Overall, remember it takes time to learn what you want from a reed and what adjustments and tools work for you. Don't be afraid to work on reeds. Even if you ruin some, you learn something in the process. First, let me say I'm not picky about my brand of reeds. The major manufacturers all turn out decent reeds. I get Rico or Rico Royals, and I like a number three. If you have a weak embouchure, you can start out on a two or a two and a half, but work on getting up to a three or even harder. The softer reeds just won't support playing loudly. You'll go flat. And if you think only a softer reed will play softly, well, that's what this video is all about. Getting a reed to play everything you want it to. I should also say I'm talking about natural cane reeds. There are synthetic reeds out there, but I'm not sure you can work on them the same way as cane. Maybe you can, I don't know. I've just always preferred the sound and feel of natural cane reeds. So you've got a box of reeds. There is a chance some of them really are duds. First, look at them from all angles. Throw out any that are grossly asymmetrical or have deep gouges through the stock. There's an old myth that the more patterning on the stock, the better the reed is. Don't believe it. Bark is only skin deep. Next, look at the heel. Check for symmetry. Throw out any reed that's obviously lopsided. Then examine the shoulder for symmetry. That's the U-shaped cut on the top. Hold the reed up to light. Notice the inverted V shape. Again, you're checking for symmetry. This can be corrected, but only to a point. If any of these are way out of whack, throw the reed out or use it for practice adjusting. My reed adjustment routine includes the following. Flatten the back. Adjust for overall strength. Adjust for side to side balance. Adjust for the higher register, middle register, and low register. It's important that the flat side of the reed is perfectly flat. This allows the reed to fully seal against the table of the mouthpiece. To do this, drag a razor or tool such as the Reed Geek over the flat side of the reed, being careful at the tip. Then to polish that side of the reed, place it on a sheet of paper on a flat surface and slide it around. Even this first adjustment will reduce the strength of the reed a bit. Probably not from a three to a two and a half, but if the reed is already soft, this will only make it softer, maybe softer than you want it. If you find this is a problem for you, go up one half strength on your next box. I'm not a spokesman for Reed Geek, but I am a big fan. This little tool costs a bit, but it works like a charm and saves me money and headaches. I have it with me at every rehearsal. Other tools you can use include a razor blade, exacto knife, reed rushes, and fine grit sandpaper. Some are more precise than others, but the principles are the same. Next, wet the reed and put it on your mouthpiece and check the seal. 
put the mouthpiece on the palm of your hand, suck the air out, and then take your mouth away quickly. There should be a pop if there's a good seal. Then give the reed a test play on your instrument. Overall, how hard is it to blow? Does it squeak? If so, the reed might be too hard, but we can fix that. How are the high, middle, and low notes? Is it easy to play all three, piano and forte? How responsive is the reed? Play fast staccato notes in all three ranges. Is the reed sluggish? If so, it's too thick in certain areas, and we can fix that. Does intonation suffer when you play louder? even with a firm embouchure and good breath support? If so, the reed is too soft and we can't fix that. Well, there is one remedy that sometimes works. You can clip the tip of the reed with a reed trimmer. Be sure to only take a tiny sliver off at a time. If your reed is sluggish before anything else, try repositioning your ligature. If it's too high, it might strangle the reed, making it respond slowly. If it's placed too low, the reed has too much wiggle room. You want it to vibrate, but you want a controlled vibration. On some reed mouthpiece setups, the ligature might overhang the vamp a bit. Find the happy medium. I often keep the reed on the mouthpiece as I adjust it. It takes a gentle touch as you near the tip and care not to run off the reed and scrape the mouthpiece. For some people, this may sound crazy, but so far I've done it without a problem. If you take the reed off the mouthpiece to work on it, hold it firmly on a hard flat surface as you adjust it. Many reed players like to use a small piece of glass. Reed Geek offers a small plastic plaque for this. To make a too hard reed blow easier, remove a small amount of material from the rails, the green areas. I find that nearly all reeds can benefit from this. Use the tip of the Reed Geek or the special little cutout which was made just for this purpose. Or, you can use a razor blade angled towards the heel as you pull it lightly toward the tip. Very fine grit sandpaper can be used if you can control it. You want to only touch the rails. The yellow areas can also be thinned, but in my experience just taking the rails down a bit is enough. As with any adjustment, make small changes, test the reed, and then fine tune it. Like when you get a haircut, you can always take more hair off, but you can't put hair back on. My other basic adjustment is to the reed's symmetry. If you concentrate, you might be able to feel with your lips as you play one side of the reed vibrating more than the other. I was surprised I actually could. The usual test is to hold the reed up to light. If you notice one side more opaque than the other, take that side down. The reed geek can be held like a pencil, and you can just erase part of the cane, as the company likes to say. Use small circular motions or light strokes toward the tip. Whatever tool you use, be careful to only work on a small area at a time. Most reeds play pretty well in the middle of the instrument's range. On the sax, this is from low D up to high C. If it feels a little sluggish, take down the area shown here in orange. Be sure to keep both sides balanced. If the high notes are a bit hard to hit, take some cane off the area just behind the tip in the center of the reed, shown here in purple. We're talking about palm key notes, D to high F sharp on the saxophone. The low notes below low D are notorious for being hard to play and harder to play softly. It takes good breath support, a firm embouchure, well seating pads, and a well adjusted reed. The area to work on is in blue on our diagram, just in front of the U shaped shoulder. In my experience, it might take removing quite a bit of cane to make those low notes sing. Since there's more cane here, you can scrape a little harder. You'll notice on our little reed map there's a heart. It might better be named the spine since it gives the reed its stability. Never take any cane off this area. All this might take some getting used to. First you have to get a feel for where the problem areas are. But sometimes it's really as simple as, I think I'd like those notes to be easier. And they can be. I've actually stopped dreading those notes below low D. With a well-adjusted reed they come out effortlessly. When your reed is adjusted to your liking, you can polish the vamp to extend the reed's life. Cane is essentially a bundle of long, tiny tubes. The ends can be seen on the cut surface, the vamp. If you wet the reed and blow into the heel, you can see the bubbles where the openings are. Over time, dirt and oil from your skin can get in there and make a reed sluggish. With the reed on a flat surface, use the back or edge of a metal spoon to press those little holes closed. With moderate pressure, run the spoon toward the tip, down the center, and both sides. 
Just a reminder, take your reed off the mouthpiece when you're finished playing. Store them flat so they don't warp. Don't store them in water and make sure they don't dry out. And for heaven's sake, if there's any mold on a reed, it's done. You can try to clean it with hydrogen peroxide or bleach, but for me, I'm not putting that thing in my mouth and breathing in spores. By the way, sanitize your mouthpiece once in a while too. Even when you do everything right, the flat side of the reed can still swell and shrink as it repeatedly gets wet and dries out. Just run your tool of choice lightly over the flat side to make it flat again. But remember, each time you do this, you weaken the reed ever so slightly. If you do it enough, your number three can become a two and a half or even a two. I hope you get a chance to play with some of your reeds. I'm sure you'll find working on them really does change how they feel. And with practice, you can adjust reeds to do exactly what you want them to do. Maybe even make any reed playable. Thanks for joining me and have fun making music.